Welcome to Film Hub's monthly producer Q&A. For today's guests, we have William Atticus Parker. William is a filmmaker. He's known for writing, directing, and producing the feature film 40 Winks and the upcoming Atrobilius. He served as the casting director, production designer, and colorists for both films. While for Atrobilius, he was also the editor and cinematographer. 40 Winks received critical acclaim and had a lengthy festival run. It streams on Prime Video, Apple TV, Tubi, and Roku by way of Film Hub. We will be focusing on the making of uh, 40 Winks later. We will also have Leon Addison Brown. Leon is a stage, television, and film actor. He's known for his supporting role in The Nick as Jesse Edwards, his supporting role in the feature film 40 Winks, and his leading role in the upcoming Atrobilius. He has also appeared in Misery on Broadway. We will also have Justin Marcel McManus. Justin is a television and film actor. He's known for his supporting role on Power Book 2, Ghost, and his leading role in the feature film 40 Winks as Fabio Berger. Justin's upcoming feature film, Double Down South, just hit theater January 19th. So my first question is, uh, I previously learned that the shooting of the film took only five days. So how was that experience and how did you pull that off? Yeah, it was insane to do it in five and a half days because, you know, even though the crew was minimal, we had a big cast. Uh, and so coordinating that was crazy. And the first time that I met Leon in person was on set. Uh, and Leon, yeah, no, it was, it was wild. I think, were you there for two days? You were there for... Uh, yes, I, I was there for yeah, I think three in total. But yeah, right, the initial yeah, the initial scene uh, two days. Yeah, the first yeah, because he's in the you know the first sequence and then everything at the end with the chocolate. Um, but yeah, yeah it's <laughs> the chocolate da da da. Um, but yeah, so kind of meeting people on set for the first time, like Justin, that was the first time that I'd ever met him. Uh, it became this really close environment. And I think that's why it became so efficient because we created this creative routine uh, and we understood each other. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it was just, you know, from my point of view, a good environment in that, uh, everyone had ideas that we could share and bring together. Uh, and it was also just uh, a lot of fun. We had a lot of laughs. Uh, and so even though we, we had to get a lot done, it was, it was a really, really enjoyable, uh, one of the best experiences in my life. That's amazing. How, how about you? Uh, how about you, Leon? What, what was your experience on, on set? I uh, forgive my voice, but it, no, it was it was total. It was so much. It's, it's one of the the. It's like the most fun I've had a shooting a film, at any time in my life. It was just amazing. Uh, um, uh, he uh, will has an ability to put people at ease and and welcome them into the film and and uh, there's like he alleviates all the pressure. And he's he has this ability to be in control, while not while while not controlling, you know. And so it, it releases the actors and allows them to play and 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 uh, and really really enjoy and bring their, their 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 best creative minds to 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 four, you know. So I, <clears throat> following that, I, I I'm wondering, uh, was anything improvised or like so from paper to screen? Did you? You know, I it was anything. I, I think there was some improvisation. It's been a while on that, so I can I can be very specific about it. But most of it was we use his words, oh, wow. you know, and, and his scenarios, and 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 played on that. Um, um, you know, he wrote this gr this great story about this guy being sort of adrift, you know. And although he takes his clients inside, I'm speaking of Fabio, he takes all of his clients inside. He, he rarely does that for himself, you know, he, he's so impacted by the world outside of him. 
And uh, it was just a whole, I mean, I remember the first day waking up in bed with him, right? And uh, or, he, or he's like, <laughs> he wakes up and I'm there. And he has no idea how I got there. And uh, so I, you know, I, I looked at it like we were these like modern day satyrs, you know, and we, we were nudging him, to, you know, yeah, we got to get this thing done, right? But you need to go inside. You need to like do some self-reflection here. You know, it was, it was, it was so much fun. It was, it was great fun. Yeah. Amazing. There's so, one uh, thing that was improv that I remember, which is when <laughs> somebody's punching somebody, somebody had the, the idea to distract the idea, uh, okay. distract the person being punched by saying, what? <laughs> <laughs> which i just thought was the best and every time that i watch it i laugh because leon just he said that and i was like yes uh oh, but, okay yes i forgot about that <laughs> yes <What? Thank> you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that's, I, I, is there that's awesome <laughs> leon I, I absolutely love what you said about will being able to be uh like keep things in control but without being controlling yeah. So I guess a question for Will, how was, apparently that's, this This is your first feature film and you were very young when you made this and working with all the actors who are probably more experienced than you are. So what was your experience going uh, on set and like, uh, was it frightening at first? Or... Well, I mean, yeah, of course, I mean, I, I mean, I had only done one short film beforehand uh with my dad where he <laughs> he played a dog walker who loses a mob boss's dog and then he has to confront her and and there was a part of that character that kind of went into connie uh but also boone was in that who plays the the antagonist in my next movie atrabilius uh but that was the only experience that I had had directing on set. I'd of course been on, you know, tons of sets before, but uh, I think I just prepped as much as humanly possible. I had like, you know, binders of like, I tried to, to research things that I wouldn't normally research. Like I knew about the frozen oranges, but I did even more about that. And, uh, you know, I, I of course did a lot uh, of uh, research for the allergy speech. Uh, and then also just, you know, kind of convincing myself of like, we're on this set to tell a story, you know, and it's gonna be fun. And there are gonna be, you know, some, some crazy nights where you have a, a ton to do, but just really you know making sure that i remember and can make everyone else remember why we're on set uh but yeah definitely when i walked on uh on set that was the day when there were the most crew members because we were on this massive sound stage where we filmed uh all in the morning we filmed this scene uh with connie's kids uh one of the kind of final interactions between Connie and Boston and then the, the opening interview scene. Uh, and so it was a massive place to walk into and kind of like where I was actually introduced into really directing. So it was a nice uh, kind of like first step to take on. Uh, but everyone on set cast and crew was just so like uh, supportive of each other and understanding of, you know, the time that we had, but like the story and everything. So I think the people around me really fostered my ability to let loose uh, and create and for us all to, to laugh and, and have fun. That's amazing. What was the biggest challenge besides uh, like having a very small crew? Well, I can say, and I'm not even just saying this to be funny. I think trying not to laugh during Dan Finnerty's scene <laughs> became a, a time crunch. 
where I was just like, are we going to have to botch this scene? Because the the person with the mic had to uh, shout out to Damani Alexis and Ramey Bagwell uh, had to like put it down for a second because he was laughing so much. And you could hear the shaking of the boom pole from him laughing. So we were just absolutely losing it. And that was like half improv, half not, but can I take your jacket or your pants is Dan Fennerty uh, territory. Uh, so there he is. <laughs> we were just talking about Dan Fennerty. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Justin. What's up? Uh, but yeah, so, but it's yeah, amazing. I'd say that that was, but I definitely say probably the day that was the most challenging uh, would probably be, it's kind of a tie, the day when Danny Burstein's character comes in with the chocolate, that was insane because we had all those characters, you know, uh, it was it was a big scene in terms of dialogue and what was happening and, and props and a few stunts. Um, but yeah, so that was a, that was definitely a challenge, but also super fun because, you know, at mm. the end of the day, it was a fun scene. Um, but yeah, so so that was probably the 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 monster to tackle. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, was just super, you know, happy and impressed and with everyone that you know and the work that they did that's but, awesome um, also not surprised by their mm -hmm. their pedigree that's um, amazing so. i i because I, I i asked all our filmmakers what's the biggest challenge i think trying not to laugh is my favorite answer that's that's and awesome. it's it's true justin <laughs> we have an outtake where justin was like if if you have to laugh go in the kitchen because people just like they just could not hold it in uh there was there there are probably 20 minutes of the outtakes for one shot of coverage uh but yeah yeah justin welcome you want to say hi how you doing good good you're just in time for the uh single analysis so we're, we're gonna do just that. in time <laughs> baby that's 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 what they call me <laughs> let's pull that up so yeah we, we already started talking about that scene earlier but uh yeah let's see is everyone seeing uh the video and audio yeah cool yeah and do we just say like pause whenever uh yeah we can do that yeah actually okay. pause trying not to laugh here uh especially i remember justin because it was the first shot of the day uh leon did this thing this one take where he was just sniffing justin and just really trying to get him to laugh and in the take that you saw we used all of the footage up until him laughing because it was kind of the anticipation of wait what's going on uh but yeah yeah, yeah I mean, it seems to be a theme of every scene. How to make Justin yeah. laugh and break yeah. every single time because it was ridiculous. Was, but yeah, go ahead. I think I was imitating a puppy dog. Yeah, like in his ear. Like... <laughs> and succeeded. That's amazing. Should I keep playing? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Wesley. I'm your new best friend. What are you doing in my apartment, man? Pause. So here, uh, my idea was, you know, even though Connie is terrifying to some degree, I was like, the people whom she kind of brings on aren't like your typical, uh, like, heavies. And so I was like, it would be funny if you kind of had just this big teddy bear who uh, every, his work was secondhand and it was kind of like the relationships that he was building uh, that were paramount. And so just the idea that he would get in bed and just kind of study him and 
and just kind of be there when he woke up, you know, it wasn't like, I'm going to scare you. It was more so like, I just want to, Hey, I just want to meet you. How's it going? You know, uh, which I think was, was super perfect with Fabio, which is, Oh my God, somebody may be from the Manson family and may just kill me right now. And so, yeah. I'm here to help you sign some papers, if that rings any bells in that blank space you call a head. You with Connie? Guilty as charged. Jesus. What are you doing on my bed? I was following protocol. Protocol? Yeah, protocol. What kind of protocol is that? My protocol. Your protocol. You slept in, sleepyhead. Stop calling me sleepyhead. We've got work to do. Early pause. So that hamster shirt. <laughs> that shirt was so just small. Gonna ask about that. It was, it was so tight. <laughs> it was. I remember, like in the the final piece of coverage, you were like just itching to get into your suit. Uh, but yeah, Jeff Mashi, the the costume designer, was like, you know, it's a super intense moment. But wouldn't it be funny if he just had a shirt that kind of anyone would have something that you know you would just kind of find around an apartment instead of just a plain white shirt uh and so in the editing bay with uh brad coleman we thought that it was the perfect place to introduce the shirt because you don't see it up until then but while the tension's kind of building to cut to the two shot and just see Justin in the hamster shirt, we just thought would be, you know, good comic relief. Uh, but also Cal Freundlich, who did the score. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Was, music is amazing. Yeah. Feature. Uh, uh, and also Justin's, which was, which I can also get into us kind of sharing that first experience, which was wild. Uh, but Cal kind of, knew how to balance the score in a way where it supported and didn't overpower. And I think this upcoming scene is a really good example of that. I typically like to do things in the earlier spectrum of the day. Why are we doing this? What do you mean why? Because I said so. Because I chose to say so. What? So many questions. Look, why bubblegum is sweet and whiskey is bitter, I have no clue. But that's the way the world seems to work. And I think we'd be far more bored, quite honestly, if we had answers to every question and reason for every point of view. Now, hurry up and get dressed. We got shit to do. Pause. When we filmed that, that was... That was the scene where I was like, I think this movie may work. Uh, and it was day two because what I saw is is two people who got the circumstances, the tone, mm -hmm. genre, really knew how to handle the dialogue, which is bizarre and absurd at times. Uh, and so uh, when Leon walked off and we went to the next setup, that's when I started to, to get like some more confidence. Uh, and... But yeah, that scene was just also uh, a blast to film because that's, I think there's kind of an example of like improv within that, even though the dialogue is the same, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of the way that Leon would uh, build different inflections off of one another uh, and just like physically what he would do, like just kind of like hitting Justin on the face and like. Uh, just his stance and like getting out of bed. It was kind of a good place uh, just for both of them, you know, kind of they're both waking up, uh, even though Leon's been awake for a long time. So kind of getting to introduce each other in that way, uh, I thought was was uh, super fun and, and just also interesting within the context of the day itself, just to start with that. Uh, I thought was was good. You have a very nice apartment. I thought you were broke. 
I I need to pause here. Uh, so this painting is in my mom's house and fun fact, I didn't know that it was fame and not frame until we were editing the movie. So I had seen that picture for all of my life and I thought that it read frame instead of fame. And in the context, fame makes more sense, but I thought it was funny that it said frame. So when when it happened that it wasn't, I got, I was a little disappointed, but, uh, but yeah. And, and, uh, and this was like kind of another thing when he said that line, we didn't necessarily know where we were going to be in the house. We knew that we'd be at a painting, but we didn't know where, uh, but because it was only really four actors in one location and we had the day, we had some time to kind of, explore where we do things mm -hmm. um and so it was fun to kind of like find these moments of blocking uh and whatnot uh yeah and what's this it's my mom's apartment she died recently and the lease is up at the end of the month that's in two days yeah i know aren't you gonna Pack up. I don't have much. If you listen to everything I say with caution, you'll be back safe in your bed tonight. Without you in it? That depends on how things go. Uh-huh. But yeah. Look, what exactly do these papers say? Pause. Uh, also, another moment of Leon improv was the kind of like the the fingers on the painting and then just like kind of collecting the dust. It was a moment of like kind of building tension in a funny way uh, where it wasn't Wesley trying to be funny. He's just he's a very uh, he's an observer. Uh, that's why he's in the bed. Uh, so just him kind of like doing that while Justin is like really you know trying to get this over with I thought like it was just such a beautiful mix which is a testament to the the two of them I, I love the dodge angle as well This is my associate, Daryl Camacho. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. You know, pause. you're welcome. Uh, also, Leon and Justin, if you want to like pause or say anything. Uh, but I was just going to say, with the, the the kind of like the bucket of oranges, uh, I thought that it was kind of similar to the reveal of the hamster shirt. You kind of see that he's holding something. But just like this mysterious man entering and then you cut out and he's holding a cooler, I just thought was another example of like kind of like what world are we entering uh, and what world uh, do these characters like kind of inhabit? Like what what really is their day to day life? Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah, his smile was great when he enters. Like, warm, but like menacing. Yeah. It's amazing. Ben Shankman. A lovely man, Daryl. <laughs> Guilty as charged. You know what that is? Origami. Origami. Exactly. <laughs> Shit fascinates me. You're making something out of nothing. You are the god. You're the creator of all creators. You choose if this piece of paper becomes a crane, a wolf, a pig. You choose if it gets to soar among the stars or just get torn up at the processed goods. Pause. So, uh, so yeah, so with the origami, which is, I just noticed is kind of just sticking out right there in, in the bottom left corner. Uh, I, it, it, it was an example of like, my kind of getting to have like dialectical freedom uh in this scene i i felt like i had the most space to really like get some 
weird bizarre moments in there to continue to set it up set up the the kind of like strange stakes uh but the the piece of origami was made by the camera operator so he got there early and he was making the origami and people were filtering in mark kornbluth and he was continuing to get like a little bit more like you know stress because everyone would start to enter and we were all like hey how's it go get a bagel and he was in the corner just like trying to do it uh but yeah but i still have it uh but uh but this is an opportunity if leon or justin if you want to say anything uh, this scene was so much fun i, I mean the, the hardest thing was not to laugh i mean it was just and I, I going back to the first scene that you know will said he knew that's when the film would work but it was also when I knew, okay, this is going to be really good. It's going to be really wonderful working with Justin because that bedroom scene, it just sort of solidified. You know, I felt comfortable with him. Uh, and I hope he did with me because he was just, he was having as much of a ball as I was. So it was, it was, and this, and this, and it carried on in these scenes. So I, I just want to pop that in. But yes, we, we, it was very difficult not to laugh at times in, in this <laughs> because it was just funny. I can add, I can say that the script for this movie, when you read it, is obviously it's very funny. And I don't find myself as a comedic actor. You know, I'm, like, I'm acting, I'm taking it very serious. I'm an actor, I make choices. And it was so ridiculous of a story, which was great. But I also was like, how do I play this? Because if you, you know, that's what makes comedy so great because it's just truthful situations that, you know, are funny sometimes, but having to find the realness and everything, like I, people are really trying to kill me. This guy is really in my bed. He's really touching my painting. Now this other guy's in my house. And so trying to find uh, where it feels real for me and just forget that this is, you know, it's a comedy, but it's, it's real. Like, these guys want to kill me, but also they're just being very strange. So how do you deal with that in every scene and trying not to laugh too? So yeah, it was a very interesting balance of trying to find the uh, this Fabio character because if I played him ridiculous, that it just wouldn't work. You know, it, it's it's really happening. <laughs> yeah, that was that was like the first conversation that we had at the Starbucks. And Justin came like with those ideas mm -hmm. and I didn't even have to put out there that that's like comedically what needed to happen. Cause he knew what he just said was perfect. And, and he like just having kind of a consistent straight man, somebody who was in all of these scenes, which are like in some, some of them, like, you know, are not necessarily related uh, but it's still him. So his finding the balance, just like being on set, watching the cut. I mean, it's just, you know, again, an incredible testament to Justin being able to not only hold that in each scene, but being able to string it together and make sure that it wasn't just kind of these disjointed moments. We were actually following Fabio and his struggle. Uh, that's, I think, what makes some of these moments to me actually oddly beautiful. Uh, yeah. Do you have the papers, Daryl? I need to sign some papers. I'll take a second. <laughs> hey, you just met some new people. It's a big day for you, Fabio. What? Are you all right, Fabio? I'm not here to hang out with you guys. I just want to sign the papers. I think he needs an order. What? Call Daryl. Fabio, take an orange. Why? Get ready for your mind to be blown right out of your skull. Frozen oranges. I don't understand. Just take one and hold one. You feel all your stresses go away. It's unbelievable. Very surprising ship. Boss, I'm not doing that. What's the problem? So, so yeah, so, I mean, Leon just explained the oranges, which is, I, I kind of had this idea, as I said, that they'd be kind of like carrying these little objects with them, or they'd have these weird, uh, 
kind of ideas uh, of like some sort of, you know, uh, how to put your mind at ease. Because I think a part of it when I was writing it, I was like, I feel like Daryl brings the oranges to anybody whom he meets first. I thought it was kind of like a housewarming gift. Like he was like, you're gonna get nervous. So here, I got some oranges for you, no problem. Uh, and so, yeah, and so just just kind of like the routine of like Wesley knows exactly what they are. Uh, it, it kind of is what makes the two of them such a great uh, um, duo. And originally in the script, his name wasn't Bubblegum, but I wrote uh, kind of in my notes, Bubblegum under Daryl. Uh, cause I was, they're just like a pairing in that way, even though Wesley isn't bitter at all. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that was, that was another fun moment to build off of and a great discovery that Justin made in the, are you trying to put me at ease because two people have just entered my home at 8am? What are you thinking? You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, so Yeah. It won't hurt you. I don't need an orange. I think you do. I do too. I'm not gonna take an orange. Just take the orange. Just do it. No. Do yes. It. No. Yes. Just shut up about the oranges. Fine. I'll take an orange. Feel better, huh? Pause. Uh, and so, uh, so yeah, so that was also a fun moment to, to edit, uh, with Brad Coleman, uh, just kind of like the back and forth of the yes, no, yes, no, mm. uh, just coming back and forth, L like in the editing bay, you start to kind of relive a lot of the moments, uh, personally, like when you cut together comedy in the right way and you watch it through then you remember what it was actually like being in that room that happened with Dan Finnerty. When you're watching the takes on their own, just coverage on one person, for me, it's more difficult to put it together. Um, but yeah, so so editing, it's like finding those moments, like recovering, you know, like what we had found on set. Uh, also, I just have to shout out Eli Berliner, who's our first AD, who like, and also was on Atrabilius, who just gets it done. Like he is never like what a lot of first ADs are, which is up in everyone's face saying, we have five minutes, we have one more shot, come on, do this now. You know, like he's like super chill. Like he would go to me, he'd whisper something, he'd be like, we have like maybe two more takes. Uh, but he also understood that we were making a comedy and he didn't want to rush improv. Uh, so us getting this whole sequence done in one day is a testament to him and Juno Wright, who was the script supervisor. Uh, and and then my mom, actually, we didn't have ice. Uh, and first time it's ever being told. There wasn't ice in the cooler. So she was just like, uh, she was just like, I have a lot of like just plastic wrap. And I was like, okay. And so, and so I was like, I have to, I was kind of like flustered. I was like, I just have to go and check out this costume. And when I came back, I looked in the cooler and I was like, you found ice. And she was like, no, it's plastic. And she had like put it together with the oranges and everything. Uh, but yeah. Uh, also, I don't know if it's in the bloop. Yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely in the blooper reel. Uh, but my sister Ash Parker was at a harp lesson in between this. Uh, and so in one of the takes, opening up the door, they timed it perfectly with Ash walking out of the elevator. Uh, and so she was actually revealed in one of the shots. And I tried to work that in in some weird way, but I was like, this doesn't work. Uh, but yeah. Who's that? I thought we were supposed to meet Connie. That's Connie's torpedo. Torpedo? Bodyguard. Hitman. Hitman? Pause. Shit. 
Uh, so like I said, this is my favorite shot of the movie. Uh, cause when we did this, I like, I felt like what I had imagined on the script had come to life. Uh, just like these, these moments of just like a bizarre kind of like blocking and set up and like these kind of like, you know, kind of almost over the top costumes and super interesting, like, but minimal production design. Uh, I just looked at that still and I was just like, yes, I wanted to get a tattoo of it, but I was like, that would hurt so much and be so detailed. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I love the shot as well, man. I, yeah, I think it's, it's great. It's and, and yeah, like we just kept running it because it was, it became like kind of this natural, like there were a lot of great moments when I was looking at the footage that the three of them found in that shot because it was just kind of like the three of them grouped together, looking over one another's shoulders. And by the time that we got to the fifth one, they were all kind of like much more used to each other, uh, which they were at the beginning of the day, but that made the next scene easier. Cause it's like, all right, now a new person's coming in to throw off, you know, Fabio's mm -hmm. uh, ease, which had just slightly started to come up. Uh, and also Sam Lazara, who plays Boston as my drum teacher and oh, has wow. been since I was about 13. Uh, and he was an actor. He never really was in anything. And so I wrote this for him because he's the sweetest guy. And I was like, I think you should play the heavy. However, I wanted him to have one eye that was like kind of grayish white because uh, I thought it would, you know, show that something was kind of off it would set off everyone every time that you look in his eyes something's you know kind of different so we had to put one of those contact lenses in and as i learned the other day trying to get contact lenses as you can see i'm still wearing glasses because contact lenses are from the third ring of hell they are just the worst thing ever so my apologies to sam yeah. uh but yeah we're not in danger. He just doesn't really like me as a person. <laughs> but yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank and you. And I love it. that final moment of Justin just kind of going like what? Uh, that, line, that line was <clears throat> that line was so funny to me. He doesn't like me as a person. It just it just landed on me in such a way that I I I have never stopped laughing every time I think about it. <laughs> it's so beautiful and like so true. Like it's something that Wesley would say. And it's something where he would actually have the tension building up of like just pure fear in the way where Justin is like, does he have a knife? However, him not liking him as a person is just as intense to him. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing these. It's amazing. I think, does anyone have any more stories to share about the scene or making of the movie in general before I go to the next section? Uh, well, what, what's the next section? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to ask, so uh, we don't have much time. I, I'm going to ask, uh, what's one piece of advice for first time filmmakers? I guess Will, of course, and then also Leon and Justin from your experience of uh, working with a first time filmmaker. Well, if what I always say is like, if you're the writer and director, write something that you'd want to be on set for. Uh, even if you're making like a three hour, you know, courtroom drama, make sure that you want to be on set for every piece of coverage and that you know the intention behind everything. Because uh, for me, it's always, you know, you're having fun. Even if you're not laughing, there's a level of like adrenaline and joy, even if you're making a dark scene, which there are. Uh, and then also just like go and do it, you know. For me, I went to do the feature because I was like, I just want to do something. I want to learn by making. Uh, and so I think just write something that you and your friends can do, you know, put thought into it, try to, you know, really make something of nothing uh, because uh, that's what it is. You know, that's what filmmaking is. Uh, and so 
it's a super powerful tool that uh, you don't have enough time to use. So really go for it. Very well said, uh, Leon, for Justin. Yeah, yeah, very well said, I concur. I concur 100%. And I think I think the ability to, to, to keep a, a creative and fun environment about you in, and and, uh, and and impart that to the ones that you're working with is just it is priceless you know because you, you'll give you you'll give your all and you'll feel good about it uh, so I don't know if we have time for a, a quick story I guess I'll give a quick Absolutely. story I don't know yeah. if if will talked about this or not but even how I got the job was kind of <laughs> But how I've gotten most of my acting jobs has been kind of strange, but also beautiful. I most of my TV roles I've gotten because somebody got fired and I got the cast and I got called and I got booked. I'm like, all right, you know, it's fine. And so this strange thing kind of happened with Will too. I got a call from a casting director, um, Billy Hopkins, who I love dearly, who's casting you know, a lot of things. Um, I guess has a relationship with Will in some way. It was like, hey. Uh, there's a film, there's a table read. You want to do it? I'm like, yeah, like, and I'll do anything for Billy. Cool, whatever. I'll read it. No clue what I'm reading, what it's for. I just said yes, you know. And I get in contact with Will, and he's like, I have the film. You know, you're gonna read for this character. And he's like, I think you told me it's five. You're like, okay, cool. Let me like look at the script and you know, highlight where he is. I'm like, oh, uh, oh, he's the lead of the. I was like, okay, hold on. Let me like get myself ready and like <laughs> getting on the Zoom. Hop on the Zoom. I'm like, hey, everybody. And of course, I'm like, I see Will. And then I see Susan Sarandon. I see all these actors. And I'm like, what is, I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, and so we're reading it and getting into it. And it's really funny and it's really ridiculous. But at some point, I think I like dropped in like really early on and it was an awesome table read. And I was like, you know, I didn't think I was going to be a part of the movie. I thought I was just helping read it. I thought I thought Fabio was cast already. I'm like, oh, they must not have a Fabio to read today. So whatever, I'll read it. And did my best, had a great time. I was like, cool, man. Thanks, Will. Appreciate you. He, I think you texted me like the next day. It was like, dude, you were so good, man. He's like, I'm going to write you a role in this movie. I'm like, sure. I'm like, listen, I, I'll take a one line in this. Like, you got so many great actors. It's, it's fine. And I think like a week later, he was like, so do you want to be Fabio? I was like, uh, what? He was like, yeah. I'm like, yes. And so we went, like you said, we went to Starbucks and we sat and we talked about it. And I had all my notes and he had his notes and we traded notes. And I think that moment, like it, it wasn't like, oh, I'm about to make a movie with this kid who's freaking 16 and like whatever. It was like he knew what he was doing and he was passionate. And I had my notes and he had his notes and we came and we understood each other. So I was like, this is going to be great. I, it didn't matter that it was his first film or not. It, you know, it, everyone starts somewhere, but it was his work ethic and the way he wanted to go about it. And I was like, OK, I can do this. And like, this is going to be great. And so, yeah, I was I was aiming from then. If, if you have uh, if you have a second and will it will that mind. Uh, I got this text and he explained to me who he was. And uh I had been doing a play, uh, I guess, a couple of months prior, uh, working on it, and and, and his mom. <laughs> so I texted his mom and said, uh, I think your son just asked me to do a film. <laughs> Is that real? Is that OK? <laughs> she, said, she said, yes, yes, he, he, he's a filmmaker. He's making films. <laughs> OK, I'm good to go. But I, I mean, you know, I, would, I had, had no idea. I said, is this a joke? You know, I thought you were like winding me up. And then uh, she said, no, it's real. I said, OK, if you're good, I'm good. Boom, and we're in. Yep. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, I, my mom just told me so many stories about Leon. And when I wrote the part, I was I was struggling to kind of figure out who would play it and then and then I was like Leon d does he have like a background in theater and she was like uh yeah and I was like could you send me his email and so I just kind of like emailed him and I'd seen him in like a few episodes of the Nick and I saw him uh in this one uh movie that one of my mom's friends did and I was like he has uh, this ability to really root everyone who's around him. And even though Wesley's funny, I was like, that's who he has to be. Uh, 
And then also with Justin, I was like scared going on the read through because we didn't, I, I didn't know, you know, I'd never really known who's going to play Fabio, you know? And so I was kind of like, shit is, is like, are we going to go and have like, are we going to film air or nothing? Is there going to be like, you know, just an invisible man, but Justin did it. And I was just like blown away. And I was like, we have him. I know who the character is now. And I know like what the movie is now. Uh, yeah. Awesome. I think <clears throat> we'll take one question from the, from the team. If anyone has anything. Well, I kind of want to know what you're up to next. And I mean, I can't believe this is, it was just so enjoyable and fun. And the behind the scenes stuff is going to change my whole perspective rewatching it. Like, I don't know. I'm just one of those people who wants to watch something and I'm on the brink of laughing and then seeing like the outtakes of, you know, like it's going to be amazing to rewatch it. But what are you up to next? Uh, so Leon and I, we we made this movie like, a year and a half ago called Atrabilius, uh, which is, uh, I mean, listen, a movie's never finished. And I think when I say it's finished, that leads me to go back to the editing room and think as to why it's not finished. So it's, it's a movie, uh, but um, it's my second feature and uh, Leon's in it. Uh, and it's got like Jeffrey Wright and uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Louis Black and Alec Baldwin. And it's just like a massive kind of uh, mystery thriller uh, about this man who's trying to solve the mystery behind his son's like kind of sudden death. And he figures out that it may be fabricated and that his son may still be alive. And so he's led to this bar uh called the Atrabilius, uh, which serves up these drinks, uh, which can supposedly uh, cure your grief without the negative effects of alcohol. It's called cocktail bereavement coordination, uh, trademark. Uh, and once he gets there, he starts to kind of unravel the the history of, of the establishment. Uh, and so, yeah, so uh, that's been and but it's like it's of a different magnitude because there are like twice as many characters three times as many locations and it's like an hour 40 uh but we filmed that in about uh 10 days and leon was teaching at suny purchase and he was leading an off-broadway play called soft <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> where he had a scar on his face and so he had to put the he had to put the prosthetic on so we had to get him out by a certain point uh but there that's that's another you know interview of course but uh KG got to see a little little snake preview um it's amazing yeah, yeah. can't wait to see the whole thing oh, movie all right i think we're at time so thank you all for sharing all the stories, love, or your passion. Absolutely look forward to you. what you guys do next. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. You'll have a great week. Take care. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. You will. Thank you. See you.